Well, folks, we have a couple of rumors for you. Well, one of them is technically a report, but report and rumor are pretty much the same thing, and there's nothing we can verify anyways. But we got some new stuff going on out there. Uh, one of these rumors, and we're calling this a rumor even though it's coming from Pioro, is about what might be shown in tomorrow's Pokemon Presents. Uh, it's interesting, at least. Uh, I, I don't know if people are going to be really excited about it if what he has heard, and again, he's noting that this may not be what's in the Pokemon Presents. In fact, he says he doesn't even know what's in the Pokemon Presents, just that he heard something last year. So we're going to talk about that. And yes, folks, we have some more stuff on Nintendo Switch 2 when it comes to release timing and also why the system was delayed. This is coming right out of Japan, so pretty fascinating. But first, let's go ahead and dive right into our 100% leaker here in Pioro. Now, he went out there and he said... I don't know anything about the Pokemon Presents. While I heard of an outsourced Unova-related game, the info was from last year, so it may turn out to be inaccurate. And then this guy says, Pioro being straightforward and not speaking in riddles, this is both shocking and extremely disappointing. And now I'm very curious as to what's going on. And Pioro goes, this is not a leak and should be taken with a grain of salt. I'm just sharing something I'm aware of now this is obviously fascinating uh pokemon black and white were pretty good games and this is something people have wanted to see a remake of for some time the thing is is when you hear outsourced while well, the last remakes you know remasters whatever you want to call them that they outsourced ended up being brilliant diamond and shining pearl which ended up pretty much being the exact same games not really like new content, and it was literally the same perspective and everything. It was a chibi art style, which, look, some of you guys really did enjoy, but some of you were also, like, disappointed in I know I was very disappointed in it, and I played through it and beat the game and thought it was just ridiculous. Granted, I don't really enjoy Diamond and Pearl in the first place, but this did nothing to make me enjoy it in the modern day. But I did note that they went on to sell like 14, 15 million copies. And I sat there, I'm like, you know, for how much money they probably spent on the outsource, it was probably fairly cheap. They probably were super happy with the return. Now, there's a positive spin to this I want to get to. But first, just note that I, I do think that this could potentially be the games that come this year. We could get it announced tomorrow morning at Pokemon Presents. We will be live streaming that. And we'll put a link down in the description to our live stream of it. But I'm just, I, I'm very fascinated that this is the route they're going, especially since, hey, they could use some positive buzz around Pokemon, especially in Wake Up Power World and all the issues with you know, Scarlet and Violet, and instead they're going to be dropping a game that, look, some people might be looking forward to, and it probably will sell all right, but isn't exactly the big, exciting game people were hoping, like, for a Legends game. Now, of course, he does note, hey, Pioro is not actually treating this like he treats all his other stuff. This is old information. Of course, it being older, to me, kind of makes it more likely, but I guess we'll wait and see what happens tomorrow. Now, I said there's a positive to this, and this is that if the Pokemon company is continuing to outsource games, it also means that Game Freak is spending more time on the games they are making, whether it's the next Legends games or whether it's the new generation that people expect to come next year or the year after. What's very fascinating when you actually look at that is we've been asking forever for them to like give more time to game development and outsourcing some of these remakes and remasters does just that. It gives Game Freak more time to spend on the new games, right? The, the new Legends game that we hope happens someday or the new generation that will happen someday. So I look, it, it, it does kind of suck, but also at the same breath, well, what do we want? Like, we want them to spend more time making games. They're still going to have games come out in between. They're not going to give up game revenue in order to do that. So the compromise from the Pokemon company, if this ends up being true, is that, hey, we're going to outsource this stuff, which you guys might complain about, but it keeps our revenue models flowing. Meanwhile, we're actually spending more time developing the big games. So I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there as this might not be the worst thing in the world and is definitely something that we should... Uh, at least note heading into the presentation, especially since Pioro has a, a very big, you know, 100% track record. And on top of that, this is just like, hey, he's even warning us he's not treating this like other information. All right. 
Now we go out there and we got to talk about Nintendo Switch too because with brand new ports coming out of Nikkei and Nikkei tends to be fairly accurate with their reports. Uh, but again, you know, you can treat it as a rumor because we can't verify any of this. Uh, and we got this all translated over here and taken care of by Video Game Chronicle because the article is behind a paywall and I tried to like become a paid member over there, but I don't have yen and, and converting cards overseas. It's it's really complicated. So we're going to rely on Video Game Chronicle here. Uh, and he said that Switch 2 is targeting March 2025 and was delayed to avoid shortages, a new report claims. Nick A corroborates previous reporting on Nintendo's successor console. So Nintendo's next games console is targeting a launch in March of 2025. That's according to a new report by Japanese news publication Nikkei, and again, it notes it's paywalled, which claims that the Switch successor's internal delay, first reported by Video Game Chronicle and others earlier this month, was partly so that Nintendo could avoid potential hardware supply issues. Although Nintendo had planned a launch in late 2024 for Switch 2, according to Nikkei, priority was given to ensure the initial inventory of the successor console and a lineup of software titles at the time of its launch in an attempt to avoid widespread reselling. So Nintendo's uh, delaying it supposedly, reportedly rumored to be because, hey, we saw what happened with PlayStation 5. We don't want that to happen to our system. We want to have so much stock, it's impossible to happen. That is uh, certainly a way to handle things, that's for sure. Now, it goes on to say that Nikkei says it expects the next Nintendo console to be a hybrid portable home device similar to Switch, as reported by previously by VGC. The publication also corroborates the machine will have a larger screen than the original Switch's 6.2-inch display, which, again, has already been reported. 8-inch screen, uh, LCD, all that stuff. That's from some prior reports and rumors. Uh, Nikkei notes that the Switch 2 could yet slip beyond March of 2025, and it's dependent on manufacturing and how much software is ready for launch. Uh, so if we go down here, as reported earlier this month, VGC from multiple sources that Nintendo had told publishers its next console will not launch in Q1 of 2025. According to those sources, third-party game companies were recently briefed on an internal delay in Nintendo's next-gen launch timing from late 2024 to early the following year. One publishing source suggested the delay was so that Nintendo could prepare stronger first-party software for the console. And what's missing there is Andy Robinson added some context where he couldn't get anyone else to corroborate that that was the reason, and he wouldn't understand why any of these third-party companies would even know what Nintendo's software pipeline is. So you can look at that for what you will. I don't know that the source is super strong on that, but now you have Nick Kay also saying that, hey, software-related things could be part of it, but it sounds like manufacturing might be the biggest reason. Like, yes, they are making Switch 2s this year, but Nintendo might want 10, 20, dare I say 30 million? Are they banking that high that they're presuming? Remember, Wii U sold 13 million, so imagine they make 30 million of these and it doesn't fly off shelves, and now they're in discount bins for 50 bucks. That would be a nightmare scenario for Nintendo, but they're banking on, supposedly, if they're trying to combat scalping, that means they're banking on this thing flying off shelves. And if they're banking on it flying off shelves, that means they're going to have a massive supply at launch. And that would just be insane. I mean, look, every system, every new, even the Wii U sold out at launch. So imagine that Nintendo's way to combat scalping is we're just going to put so many systems into the market that it's impossible for that to happen. That's a very interesting business strategy because also if you flood the market with too many, you can also end up overstocking and overstocking has a negative effect on businesses because when you overstock an item and flood the market, it usually ends up driving the price of your system down because retailers aren't going to maintain that level of shelf space if the systems aren't moving quick enough. So you really have to assume that things are going to fly off the shelf and I look, Maybe Nintendo's confident it will, and that's because of the software. Again, we don't know what the software lineup is, but whatever Nintendo's preparing, maybe they're just that confident because they know the big, massive games. People are going to want to buy these systems to play, and so maybe Nintendo just knows, yeah, we're going to sell $30 million because we know what our first-year lineup is, and we know how many people want it. And imagine that in the year one, they sell $20-plus million even, like, that is that would be insane to me if they sell 20 plus million. I mean, even 10 million at launch would be like an all time record. So I'm just going to sit back and see what's happening here. Uh, what I will say is, as uh, as much as it sucks that the system is, is, you know, is reportedly coming out in 2025. If the reason is to make it not hard to get, I don't actually mind that. 
I don't mind if that is actually the reason. I would like to see uh, scalping reduced as much as possible, and Nintendo taking measures against that, to me, does make me smile a little bit. Obviously, we have to consider the other part of the report as well, is that Nintendo is willing to delay it beyond March of 2025, uh, but obviously that doesn't mean anything at this point. And it is something that was already talked about in the prior reports. Like, yeah, it could always slip out of that window, but you know, the chances of it actually slipping out of that window might be pretty slim. And yeah, Nintendo should be announcing it at some point this year. And that seems to be pretty consistent across the board. So once it's announced, I think it's fair to say it's coming out within a year, maybe of it being announced, if not less time. So we'll see. All I know folks is I'm pretty excited for this system. I'm a little tepid on what's happening with the Pokemon Presents tomorrow, but of course, even if a black and white chibi style, you know, remaster, remake, whatever you want to call it, is announced tomorrow, that doesn't mean that's going to be the only Pokemon game announced, so there could be some other exciting ones. Heck, a Pokken Tournament, you know, DX2, you know, or just, they probably wouldn't even use DX, they probably just use the number two, that would be pretty sick from Bandai Namco, so there could be a lot of really fun announcements tomorrow on the Pokemon Presents, so we'll see. Uh, for right now, though, the expectation, at least based on a rumor, is black and white being kind of not that great unless they went with a different company. They could have outsourced to a different company, and maybe they're treating black and white even better. Maybe they outsourced to Bandai Namco, and if they did that, well, Bandai Namco has been fantastic. So I, I would actually like to see what they could do with a remaster if they were given the opportunity. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rebel Jance. Let me know your thoughts down below, and we'll catch you in the next video, live stream, or whatever we end up doing today.